DigiKey and Adafruit present. Dun, dun. On MPI. Texas Instruments is our featured company on Ion MPI this week, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion MPI? Okay, so this week's Ion MPI, as always, I go to digikey.com slash new, and I'm like, what is the new? Well, I used to do this all the time anyways, but now I'm sharing with you the thing that I found on that page that was the most interesting part of the week. And this week, it's this new buck boost converter from TI. I love TI power regulators and buck boost converters. They like, there's so many different ones. They cover like every range. They're super powerful. They're very integrated. And they always have these like touches that make you think like, wow, this person who designed this chip really thought about uh, some cool and useful new functionality. I mean, power supplies are supposed to be like boring, but actually they're, they're kind of not. They're the most important part of your design, like the base of the design. A good power supply makes everything work out and a bad power supply is gonna cause you all sorts of headaches. So um, this week's MPI is the TPS, which I think is like Texas Instruments Power Systems. I don't know exactly what the TPS stands for. It's a TPS 63900. Um, and this is a very tiny little chip that is a buck boost converter that takes uh, about 1.8 to 5 volts in and gives you a selectable 1.8 to 5 volts out. Here's a simplified schematic. So uh, one thing you'll notice is, of course, um, it's uh, synchro uh, synchronous. It does, the transistors are all internal, so you don't need an external transistor. You don't need an external diode, uh, Schottky diode. Um, it's really easy to use. You've got an input capacitor, output capacitor, and then the inductor. One thing that's neat is that this is a buck boost converter. Uh, only one inductor needed, and uh, it's about the same price as a buck or boost converter, but you get both peanut butter and jelly together in one. Um, when you have a voltage, let's say you want to have a voltage of about 3.3 volts, right? That's a pretty common voltage uh, for most electronics. Um, but you're using something like a couple alkaline batteries or you're using a lithium polymer or lithium ion cell. Well, you know, a lithium ion cell or lipoly is going to be 4.2 volts when fully charged, right? So it's higher than your output desire of 3.3. But then as the battery gets run down, it drops down to as low as 2.7 or even 2.5 volts. And that's below 3.3 volts. You want to boost that voltage up. So what's nice here is no matter what the VN is, between 1.8 or 5.5 volts, the output is going to be a steady voltage. And it will automatically switch between the two um, modes of operation in order to maintain that clean 3.3 volt output, which is you know wonderful. This, this means you're getting the most power out of the battery. You're really just like draining it, but also getting um, the exact voltage you need. And something that's interesting that you can see here is um, there's those three configuration resistors. We'll chat about those in a moment because this buck boost converter has an interesting dual output selection mode. Okay, so um, one thing that I thought was neat is uh, if you go to TI's YouTube page, they have a whole webinar that like is like 45 minutes long and it talks about all their different buck boosts. They talk about this one, but it also um, has this nice diagram that shows you their family of boost and buck boost converters. And um, there's a lot of chips that TI makes for this, you know, power regulation and boosting. So um, I thought this was handy. I kind of bookmarked this. I want to go watch this in more detail after the show because um, depending on your current output uh, and your quiescent current, you might want to have um, a different selection. So this chip, you see, it's right there in the middle. It's that like sweet spot. It's got a, a internal switch of about 1.5 amps. No, that doesn't mean that the output is 1.5 amps. It means the switch that uh, is inside that does the boosting or bucking or there's multiple switches um, is about 1.5. The, the actual current you're going to get is, I think for boosting, it's about um, half an amp at 400 milliamps and then in buck mode i think it's about uh, 600 milliamps so it's you know over 300 milliamps or so depending of course on the voltage input and output um but what's really nice is the ultra low quiescent current under a microamp that's not a typo it's not under milliamp it's under a microamp um for the quiescent current which means that this is an excellent chip for use with wireless devices that you only need to send data once in a while. So this is what they're kind of uh, picking, you know, they're, they're sort of saying, this is really good for your LoRaWAN. This is really good for your BLE. This is uh, even good for maybe something that is um, 
uh, Wi-Fi, something that only wakes up once in a while, but you do need to have a really good solid power supply at that time, and that spends most of its time asleep. Um, so they're like, why ultra low IQ DC DC needed? And usually DC DC are not low quiescent. Usually you that's one of the things that you give up uh, when you move from an LDO to a DC DC. But especially when you have these devices that again they wake up you know once a day, once an hour, they take a measurement, they transmit it, and they go back to sleep. Um, the quiescent current is it becomes the dominant uh, power usage, right? Even though it's extremely low, the amount of time that you're spending in that low power mode is so long that it actually starts becoming, the, the quiescent current starts to really matter, even though it's so low compared to the running current. You know, maybe it's like three orders of magnitude less, but it's three orders of magnitude as long, right? So that's why, um, for you know, for wireless, or in this, they call this pulse load applications, the quiescent is important. So I thought that this was a really nice little chip that could handle, you know, kind of does a little bit of everything. It's like a bento box of, of converters. Um, it's got some nice specifications. Uh, it, you know, you can see there, it can give you up to you know, over 600 milliamp output if you need. So you can use it for um, some, you know, low power, not multi-amp, maybe not like cellular uh, wireless transmissions, but definitely will do your Bluetooth, your BLE, your LoRa, your ZigBee, your Z-Wave, all those things, uh, which again, you know, low quiescent, uh, long time asleep, wake up once in a while, do something. Um, this is the other thing that they had, which I thought was, it, it, you know, at first I was like, this, why is this at all interesting? And then I thought about how you would implement it if it wasn't built into the converter. And I was like, oh yeah, that would totally suck. So it's really nice. It's built in. So when you're doing your measurement, let's say, let's say you have, you know, a, uh, little Bluetooth wireless temperature humidity sensor, and, um, you want to take a measurement every five minutes and transmit it to HomeKit, you know, your, your hub that is, um, measuring data from around your house. This is a home automation project. So for that, you know, you're going to be asleep for five minutes. So that's where the low quiescent current is so important. And then you're going to wake up and you're, before you turn your radio on, before you turn on the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or whatever, you're going to want to like get some things going. You might want to configure your memory. You might want to read some EEPROM. You might want to take some sensor readings and all that can, you know, maybe it's not going to take that long, but it, it does matter. And for those sensors and those devices, you might be able to run at 1.8 volts, right? And if you're in an LDO mode only, it won't be that important, maybe it doesn't matter, but if you're using a buck boost, you can actually save a little bit of current. By starting up and running your MCU at 1.8 volts um, to uh, take advantage of that lower voltage and not turn on your radio, which is gonna be that high current, higher voltage, right? That's gonna need 3.3 volts or four volts or whatever. And then right when you're about ready to transmit, boom, you tell the um, DC-DC converter, hey, uh, instead of giving me, you know, two volts, give me 3.3 volts. Everything powers up much higher um, all at once. You do your transmission and then you can um, go back to sleep at, again, the uh, lower voltage. So to do that, um, if you go back to uh, the first image, no, the, sorry, the second image. The first, if you count by zero. Um, on the right, you see the config resistors. So those resistors, normally, you know, if you've con made a couple, you know, buck boost converters, you're like, hey, where's my resistor divider, right? Usually you have a resistor divider on the output that sets the output voltage. That's not what's going on here. Instead, it uses these single resistors to set the voltage. And you're probably like, well, how do you tune the voltage? Well, there's a table and the resistor value correlates with an output that is goes up by 100 millivolts at a time. Let's check out the data sheet. There's a whole table there. So you have uh, three resistors. The first two, I think, are the two voltage output options. And the third one is the input current limit, which I won't cover here. Again, the data sheet in the webinar does. And then if you see on the left, there's the cell select line. Well, when that pin is high or low, it determines which output voltage you're selecting. And if you think about like, well, how would you do this normally? It's like, well, you could do it by like messing with the voltage divider on your um, DC DC converter, but suddenly you're like, you have all these like transistors and they're low side and you have to like switch them and you have to like switch them instantly so you don't get like a, you know, a, a both off at the same time or both off at the same time. So I actually understand why they're like, have this all integrated and have a little selector and it does the logic for you. 
Um, so I think this was kind of, it was kind of a neat, it's, a, it's an interesting thing of like, okay, you really need to, you know, you have a small battery, maybe it's a coin cell, or maybe it's like a, you know, a 50 milliamp hour battery. How do you, how do you run your hardware as long as possible? And I think this is a, you know, it's a not expensive chip. It's like a dollar or so, uh, and it does the job quite well. So. This is on DigiKey, and you can find it by uh, using the short URL, digikey.com forward slash short forward slash 4C8HVR, or you can um, look at this part number that's on the screen, or TPS. you can follow the links that we have in the blog post or in the channel, or more. It's easy to find. Lady Ada shows you how, and that is this week's. And if you, I, I will okay. show you really quickly if we go to the overhead. I'll yeah. just show the uh, the eval board, which I picked up. TI makes nice, simple eval boards. So you're like, what's going on here? Um, so this is actually all of the converter, right? This little this little section here. You've got um, this inductor. It's actually like a, a chip style inductor. Input, output, capacitor. Um, a lovely little layout. They have some options for bigger capacitors if you want. And then these are all of those resistors. Remember I said the resistor sets the output voltage and the current limit? Um, well, you would use these to um, set this value here. You can see the switch here for the different values you can set. And that correlates with an output voltage and a current limit. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's actually one of the few times where I'm like, if you really have to mess with all the resistors, it's kind of nice that these uh, all come with dip switches ready to go. But the full solution is so small. And then, of course, these can be a 402 resistors. So really, it's only a few millimeters square. Love Just about chip. everyone in the chat was saying, I was looking for a boost converter. Love D D DC boost converters. This is just awesome. Thank you for the ideas. This is one of, I think, the best MPIs that you've done Aww. this year. It's useful. Okay. I'm going to use it. This, this week's on MPI. MPI.